A skeletal screen is what they call it. I've been struggling to put my finger on this because I've seen it in many websites uh, when I'm trying to load a website and I see this uh, pulsating color of like gray and bluish gray and I've seen this before and I've been wondering what this is and how it's actually implemented and I finally found a way uh, in order to implement this. So this is called a skeletal screen um, animation and it is done through CSS. It is an animated placeholder that stimulates the layout of a website while data is being loaded. No matter how much we can try as web developers, sometimes it takes a long time to load data, especially when you're loading data from an external API. It takes a pretty long time. Now you could use a loader to show the user that some content is being loaded, but there's this actually modern and expressive way of actually uh, showing the user that the content is loading and this is called a skeletal screen. It lets the user that the content is loading and more importantly, it provides an indication of what exactly is loading, whether that could be an image, a text, a card, a video, so on and so on. So this animation is popularly used by huge companies like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. In fact, I'm pretty sure you've seen it on Instagram and on Facebook as well if you're a Facebooker. It's also popular on LinkedIn as well. If you've probably seen something like this, if you're uh, somebody who frequents LinkedIn, then you've probably seen something like this, especially if your data is low, Facebook as well. So the good thing is that today I'm going to show you how to simply execute this uh, skeletal screen. Uh, very simple. We're going to be using vanilla JavaScript and we're going to, using, we're going to be using uh, simple HTML in order to construct this very simple and yet very precise uh, loading screen. So are you ready to do this? Before we begin, you know how we do it. You need to subscribe to the channel. Please make sure that you subscribe to the channel. My channel is a channel where I put out content to make sure that you become a better developer one video at a time. In fact, I'm pretty sure that after you see this, you're going to implement it in your next project. So be sure to subscribe to my channel because I'm dropping lit content that is going to knock your socks off. So be sure to subscribe to my channel. If you've learned something new today or if you've enjoyed this video, please press the like button so that somebody else can see it. And if there's any queries, if there you are po any positive comment, I welcome positive commentary. Uh, not so much on the negative commentary, but I welcome any type of commentary in my comment section. So make sure you blow up the comment section. I love reading your comments and responding to them. All right, let's not waste too much of your time. Let's get into this. The first thing that we need to do, of course, is we need to uh, create an HTML project. I'm going to bypass through that because I'm pretty sure uh, through my video on Vite, you know how to do this. All right, so I've created our HTML and um, I've just ran it through live server. All right, so now what we need to do is to need, we need to create an outline of our cards. We need to create this outline. So you can see that over here we have a bit of an avatar here and then here we have like sort of like a title of our card and then over here we have the paragraph for our card. So we need to create all of that and we need to style it. Let's go. All right, so I'm just going to get rid of this for now and then I'm going to just paste this in. All right, so what we've did here is that we've created a diff container and inside of that diff container we have our card over here we have separated our card into two divs the first div is going to be where the paragraph is going to live okay I need to close this tag so this is where our paragraph is and this is where by the title and the image is so the reason why we have uh, these this many p tags is because we're going to style them. Do you see how they are stacked up against one another? So let me just show you. You see how they are stacked up against one another? So this is uh, each individual p tag over here. So we're going to style them differently. So we're going to use Flexbox in order to make all this thing fit in into one card. Instead of uh, having an external style sheet, we're just going to style everything in here. First, we're going to put our skeleton title and our skeleton paragraph. We're going to give it the, that height and that, um, that width, All right? And then we're going to work our skeleton animation. So the first thing that we're going to do, you've noticed that every, each and every skeleton element there, I've given it a class name of skeleton. So I'm just going to call out that uh, skeleton thing and I'm going to say animation. And we're going to call that animation. Oh my goodness, they fit it up for me. Uh, I would appreciate if you get rid of this. Thank you. So we're going to call it 
skeleton loading and we're gonna give it um, a one second animation should be linear indefinite infinite sorry infinite and it should alternate that's good and then we're gonna give it some keyframes so those colors that are pulsating over there, we're gonna state them down in our keyframe. So that is our keyframe that describes the alternation between the colors. So this is like sort of like a bluish color and this is like a sort of like a grayish blue color. So yeah, so this is our animation over here and this is uh, the keyframe that describes uh, the alternate, alternating of our colors. So that is fine. So if we go back into our, project let's see what we already have okay so nothing yet and I think this is probably because we haven't styled our card so let's go ahead and do that uh, first maybe let's start with our container let's uh, give it a flex and a flex wrap and then after that we can move on to our card that and remember we have a head our uh, the head is where we have the image and we have the title so we have to make sure that uh, they align they, there's a space between those two elements all right there we go and then I think we're gonna style the image as well we're going to make sure that it has a border radius of about 100% to make sure that it's nice and round because that image represents an avatar. And you will notice that on our image, we have not given it a sort of like a link, which is fine. Or, uh, I mean, the, 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 the SRC, we have not given it that uh, SRC link, which is okay, which is fine. It all because it's supposed to just show that there's supposed to be an image there, and I think it's best to show in a, a broken image icon shows better that in the uh, it's supposed to be an image. So I feel like that broken image icon shows uh, the user that that is supposed to be an image. Okay, and if we go back to our website, let's check it out. You can see there's the bit of our, our animation and there's that broken image icon that I was talking about. And so, yeah, you can see that everything is animating. So we want these cards to fill up the screen like they did in our, in our other app. And we're gonna use JavaScript in order to do that. Uh, so that is just as simple as just using a simple for loop. I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna just create a script tag. And inside of our script tag, I'm going to call our container. I'm going to initialize our container using let. And then I'm gonna call a for loop. And I'm gonna create a simple classic for loop. And I'm gonna use that to fill. So this uh, this div card, I'm actually getting it from here at the, at the very top over here. So because we have it in our for loop, we don't actually need it here. So I'm just gonna get rid of it. So all I did was just like copy this and just put it in here. So this is container dot inner HTML plus equals. And then I put the card in like that. And if we go back to our application, let's go back to application. So you could see now that our, um, our card are filled up in the screen. So it's showing that there's content that is waiting. So now what we're going to do now is that we're going to actually fill up the content that is supposed to be there. And we're going to use a JSON placeholder uh, API to fill up, to actually fill up this content. And I'm going to show you how it's done using JavaScript. So if you're not familiar with a JSON placeholder, just go to JSON placeholder So it is, um, it is sort of where you can get fake data in order to use it or test it in your code. So it's just a free fake API for testing. Um, so we're going to use it and we're going to use fetch in order to do that. We're not going to take too long in this video. We just want, um, what we want to happen is that once this thing has done pulsating, because remember this is just a loader. 
So it's supposed to load and then after it's done loading, the real data or the real content is supposed to show. Cool. So now we're going to use fetch in order to do that. All right, then after that, we have to do a then. And then after that, that's when we can access our post. So we're actually getting our post from JSON placeholder. And then the first thing that we need to do is that we need to cancel our con anything that is inside of our container. So we need to say in our HTML is equals to absolutely nothing. And then after that, we need to take our posts. So let me just show you what our posts look like on JSON placeholder so that you can get like sort of like an idea of what is actually happening here. Um, where is it? Okay, there, there they are. So these are like our posts. So there's like a hundred posts over here. So we're actually accessing this data from JSON placeholder and we're using it inside of our, inside of our website. All right, let's go back to our website and back to our code ME. So, and now we just say post dot for each each of those element, we need to access the post. And how about we do some curly brackets because this is going to be a long ass code. I'm going to say container dot inner HTML. And then we say plus equal. And we put this Ooh. So plus equal and yeah, we put this in. So I'm just going to get rid of that. All right. That is cool. So this is the card that is going to be displayed. The card that contains our information that is going to be displayed uh, on our screen. So I think that is it unless we have to do like a sort of a, a catch I'm going to do that because that's necessary. Get rid of this. Go through this first and see. Oh. All right. And now I think we can go back to our code and see how everything works. You can see that the data is already in there. But as we load, you can see it, it sort of it runs so quick, but you can see the skeleton uh, animation screen before the data actually loads. So you can see that it is actually uh, showing up before the data arrives. So yeah, so that's exactly how it's done using CSS. Um, so I think we're going to stop it here. So thank you so much for watching. Please make sure that you have subscribed um, and you like this video if you've enjoyed it and make sure to leave those comments in the comment section. I love seeing your comments. Uh, so yeah, other than that, thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time on Coding 101.